Don't you want to start with an episode about home? Actually, never mind. Let's do an episode on that. That's where Rule 34 comes from, right? Yeah! Based. Count me in then. Epic! Let's go! The rules of the internet are netiquette, which is a list of rules and good behavior to follow when posting on the internet. They evolved a lot over time and have a ton of different iterations. But even if the internet is serious business, remember that none of the rules are meant to be taken seriously. Around early 2007, a set of rules was posted on Encyclopedia Dramatica, collaborated by a group of anonymous fortune users. Oh man, more fortune shit again. This website is terrible. Most of the popular memes from the early 2000s come from fortune. It was an iconic meme factory. More like a pedo bigot factory. Anyway, as you can see, Rule 1 to 33 are written off as something to not talk about, and Rule 34 was already established in 2007. Another iteration was posted by another Anon on Fortune's text board shortly after, this one having 50 rules. After lots of Anons fighting over which rules should exist or not, the amount of rules became absurdly high. But in early 2009, a set of rules was posted on archive.org, and this is the one that stuck around, so it's this one we're gonna talk about. Rule 1. Do not talk about me. Rule 2, do not talk about B. B is one of the boards on Fortune. It's... No, we're not talking about B. But these two rules have an interesting story. It's about avoiding the eternal summer. Fortune was never good, and I don't want your rose-tainted fairy tales to make innocent people think this has been shit all of the internet has any value. Ugh. Next rule, then? Rule 3 to 5, we are anonymous. Anonymous is legion. Anonymous never forgives. These three rules are a reference to the slogan of the hacker collective called Anonymous recognizable by their Guy Fox mask. They are a vigilante group originating from Fortune that fights against censorship, control, and surveillance coming from governments and corporations. They also fight animal abuse, especially against cats. In 2008, they became well known for Project Chinology. The goal of the project was to expose the corruptions of the Scientology Church, or just mock it for the lols. This was done through protests, EOS attacks, and many other actions. They have a ton of history. It's a whole other rabbit hole. Sadly, we don't have time to cover everything here. Rule 6. Anonymous can be a horrible, senseless, uncaring monster. <laughs> Rule 7, Anonymous is still able to deliver. <laughs> Here's the meme you requested. Rule 8, there are no real rules about posting. Rule 9, there are no real rules about moderation either. Enjoy your ban. Rule 10, if you enjoy any rival sites, don't. What the fuck are those rules? These are not about the internet. They're about fortune. Yeah, I forgot to mention, but these are a blend of rules about fortune and the internet. But a lot of them still applies to the whole internet. Why are they called rules of the internet, not rules of fortune then? Do they think they own the whole internet? They were pretty influential on memes and internet culture back then. Hmm, <clears throat> something tells me they take way too much credit. Well, to be honest, the rules are allegedly not even from Fortune. Here's a clip of Moot, who was Fortune's admin at the time. The rules were created by the man to keep you down. They don't actually exist. It's true, the rules were invented by Gaia. If you check it, it's in their archives. Wasn't Gaia like the rival site of Fortune or something? Yeah, it was! LMAO, this is priceless if it's real. I tried to find those archives Moot mentioned, but found nothing proving if it's real or not. Anyway, moving on! Rule 11! All your carefully picked arguments can easily be ignored. Remember long, Cat. Memes were simpler back then. In 2006, they stood for something. And that something was nothing. Memes just were. Long Cat is long. An undeniably true self. Rule 12. Anything you say can and will be used against you. I know all about the dictionary. Rule 13. Anything you say can be turned into something else. Fixed. I know all about the dick and balls! That's not what I said. Rule 14, do not argue with trolls. It means that they win. What the 
fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class at the Navy SEALs, and I've been involved in- Rule 15! The harder you try, the harder you will fail! I'm trained in guerrilla warfare, I'm the top sniper in the entire armed forces, you are nothing to me but just another target! Rule 16! If you fail in epic proportions, it may just become a winning failure! You think you can get away with saying, shipping me over the epic again? Rule 17! Every win fails eventually! <laughs> Rule 18, everything that can be labeled can be hated. Rule 19, the more you hate it, the stronger it gets. Rule 20, nothing is to be taken seriously. Didn't you say the internet is serious business earlier? Oh yeah, I was just referencing a meme. I never know if anything you say is a real sentence or if you're just repeating a dead meme. The internet is serious business or the internet. Serious business is an ironic meme to remind that discussions on the internet are usually inconsequential. The meme can also be used to tell a heated debate that the subject is taken way too seriously. This Google trend showed that the meme was searched a lot throughout the 2000s, but it died out in the 2010s. Rule 21. Original content is original only for a few seconds before getting out. Hey everyone, check out this meme I made. Oh. Rule 22. Copypasta is made to ruin every last bit of originality. Copypasta is a mix of copy, paste, and pasta. It's a short or long text that people copy and paste everywhere for the lulz. The most iconic one being the Navy SEAL copypasta. You probably came across it during your internet exploring. As early as 2006, you can find a definition posted on Urban Dictionary. Rule 23. Copy pasta is made to ruin every last bit of originality. Copy pasta is a mix of copy, paste, and pasta. It's a short or long text that people copy and paste everywhere for the lulz. The most iconic one. Rule 24. Every repost is always a repost of a repost. Have a repost of a repost. Have a repost. Rule 25. Relation to the original topic decreases with every single post. Hey guys, how do I shot web? Well, it's simple. First you got to. Of course! I do believe in Raptor Jesus now! Rule 26. Any topic can easily be turned into something totally unrelated. We? What were we talking about again? Rule 27. Always question a person's sexual preferences without any real reason. Also, what do you think of armpits? Rule 28. Always question a person's gender, just in case it's really a man. I thought this rule was good for a sec. How brainlet of me. Why? You should always question someone's gender to make sure you don't misgender them. Uh, no. This is fortune users. They just hate girls. That's why there's an emphasis on the gender being male. Oh, oh, no time to dwell on that. Time for next rule. Rule 29. In the internet, all girls are men and all kids are undercover FBI agents. No wonder the men-children pedophile community only attracts dudes and FBI agents. Rule 30. There are no girls on the internet. Alan Mayo, the absolute state of channers needing not one but three rules about their misogynistic paranoia. Rule 31. Tits or GTFO, the choice is yours. Holy shit, we're hitting in seldom levels that shouldn't even be possible. Can we just skip all of them until rule 34? Wait, this one has some history behind. Please, please, please let me talk about it. The history of how fortune users get no bitches. Lol, how about no? Side premiere, please. This is an informational show. What's the point if you don't let me teach stuff to the viewer? Uh, okay, fine. As you might have guessed, there wasn't much girls in these kind of communities. From my understanding, anyone mentioning that they were a girl on Fortune or other forums would cause threats to derail. Everyone would give attention to the girl poster, good and bad attention. They'd just be harassed by simps and incels, got it. The rule does sound harsh. Not surprising coming from Fortune, but at its heart, it's about how Anonymous has no gender. It shouldn't matter what your gender is, everyone should be equal. Well, did they refer to themselves with gender-neutral pronouns then? No, not really. Thought so. Anyway, moving on! Rule 32, you must have pictures to prove your statements. This rule is referring to the meme pics or it didn't happen. A quick and simple way to ask for proof when an internet user tells an epic story that's too good to be true. It originates from the Tribal War forums in 2003. A user was claiming about how their sister's friend came over and they were having an awesome pillow fight. But another user replied within seconds, pics or it didn't happen. And to everyone's surprise, pics were never provided. Rule 33, lurk more. It's never enough. A lurker is someone who watches a certain community without ever contributing to it. Elitist communities like Fortune recommend lurking before posting on their website to understand the culture and its memes. Lurker is also the name of our precious $1 Patreons, who get their name credited at the end of the episode, have access to a cozy private Discord. Cybermare! What? I'm helping. Oh! Next rule!
rule is the rule you remember. Rule 34! There is porn of it, no exceptions. Finally, the only rule that matters. The earliest mention of this rule is from a comic made by Zoom Out Productions in late 2004. It portrays the creator shocked to find an SFW artwork of Calvin and Hobbes. It seems like rule 34 is the earliest rule that was created out of every other rules. You might be wondering, why isn't it rule 1 then? Well, part of the joke was that a list of rules of the internet would exist in the first place, and 34 is just a random number. This joke got lost when Fortune News started making a real list of rules. Rule 34 would also be used in the demotivational poster format to give a lewd context to otherwise safe pictures. Nowadays, Rule 34 is known for being a naughty website filled with naughty content. Actually, this reminds me. I gotta check something. Uh, what are you doing? No exceptions. Run on from love up. Oh, no, 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 please don't look me up on- Aw, oh, dude, cringe. There's no result for either of us on Rule 34. Oh, wait. I do remember what Rule 35 is now. Rule 35, if no porn is found at the moment, it will be made. No, no, that's just gonna make peeps wanna create it. You hear that, everyone? Chop, chop. Rule 36, there will always be even more fucked up shit than what you just saw. Not if there's Rule 34 of me. Rule 37, you cannot divide by zero just because a calculator says so. Divide by zero is another meme of the early internet. Caption is always accompanied with a picture showing a disaster, the result of dividing by zero. Sometimes the caption, a she, is added to express the quick reaction of the poster facing what they caused. It emphasizes on how immediate the disaster is. One of the earliest versions of this meme is on YTMND, which was posted on October 3rd, 2005. Rule 38, no real limits of any kind apply here, not even the sky. Bruh. Those channers are gonna need to go outside first if they want to reach the sky. Roll 39! Caps Lock is cruise control for cool! Caps Lock, cruise control for cool! Caps Lock, cruise control for cool! Roll 40! Even with cruise control, you still have to steer! Caps Lock, cruise control for cool! Roll 41! Dasu isn't funny! Seriously, guys, it's worse than Chuck Norris jokes! Oh boy, that's the meme in one rule! Epic combo! Desu is a Japanese word that is pretty hard to translate into English, but it's a pretty formal word used when talking to strangers or a superior. Suzuki from the anime Rosin Maiden would use the word Desu so much that it became associated with her. <laughs> Anons in 2006 would start spamming fortune by going desu desu desu, but other Anons thought this meme was forced, and they later found an official counter to desu spam. It's Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, because of, uh, he's very strong. The desu spam was so bad that it allegedly got banned on fortune at some point. It doesn't sound like the desu meme gets much love, but it's apparently worse than Chuck Norris jokes, also known as Chuck Norris facts. Chuck Norris jokes are absurd and hyperbolic statements about Chuck Norris, an American actor and martial artist. All those facts revolves around making Chuck Norris seem like an impossibly strong and logic-defying being. This meme originated from the Something Awful forums in 2005 and quickly became popular on the entire internet. But it quickly became overused as it reached mainstream attention. And since Fortune is counterculture, Chuck Norris jokes became very frowned upon. Rule 42, nothing is sacred. Except Raptor Jesus! Rule 43, the more beautiful and pure a thing is, the more satisfying it is to corrupt it. You know it's gonna happen sooner or later. Stop! Rule 44, even one positive comment about Japanese things can make you a weebu. A weebu is a person that idealizes anime and Japanese culture in general, sometimes to the point of desiring to be Japanese. Before weebu became common, people were using the word Wapanese, a mix of wannabe and Japanese. The term weebu comes from this comic by Nicholas Gurewitch, and it didn't mean anything in the context of the comic. That was until the word Wapanese was filtered into Weibo and Fortune that it gained its modern definition. Rule 45, when one sees a line, one must get into the car. This rule is referencing the meme, Jesus Christ, it's a line, get in the car. Another 2006 meme from Fortune, a drawing appeared on the internet of a circle alongside a kitty face smiley, accompanied with a speech bubble saying, Rawr, I'm a lion. Alongside the sentence, Jesus Christ, it's a line, get in the car. There was also a lot of image macros and demotivational posters about that meme. This is one of my favorite memes. Rawr! Rule 46. There is always furry porn of it. I wonder how a furry me would look like. I hope she's hot and not a cringy freak. But Cybermare, aren't you already a furry? What? Shut up. I'm not a furry. But you're an anthropomorphized animal! I'm a pony. There's a huge difference. Okay, if you say so. Rule 47. The pool is always closed. 
Oh boy. What? This is a big one. I don't know if I have the strength to explain it after all those memes. Well then, we should stop and make a part two. That means we'll get double the views. I know! I'll just get Blue Shades to help! Literally who? Another YouTuber that makes videos about the internet! Thanks, Manon. In the far off year of 2006, 4chan's random board, infamously known as B to Many, started regularly raiding the popular avatar chat room game Habbo Hotel after the moderators of Habbo Hotel were accused of racially profiling against black avatars. B's response was to dress up as a black avatar donning a slick business suit and a big afro. Now, Habbo Hotel raids were not uncommon. Something Awful often raided the game as early as 2004. Raiding takes on a different meaning in Habbo Hotel as opposed to other MMOs and social games at the time, mostly in part to the users in Habbo being a fixed part of the environment. In most massively multiplayer games, you can typically pass through people which keeps people from blocking or gatekeeping parts of the experience. With this technical glitch or intentional design choice in mind, Anons of B converged upon the popular hangout spots to create a digital blockade. Anons on B, who participated in these raids, adopted the clever moniker of blockers. Even though Habbo Hotel is just a social hub, these blockades were a source of anguish and frustration for regulars of the game and its rooms. Eventually, a blockade was created by the pool and inevitably, someone had typed out, Pools Closed. And like clockwork, the saying became a meme and spawned many variations used in the game and the random board itself. 2006 4chan anachronisms like pools closed due to AIDS, or pools closed due to stingrays, or pools closed due to stingrays and the stingrays have AIDS. The spread of the saying influenced organizing efforts and it inevitably morphed into a symbol for the raids themselves. Software was developed to counteract bans and repeatedly spam phrases while bypassing all of the game's filters. B's momentum led to the largest Habbo Hotel raid on July 12th, 2006, where they effectively made the game unplayable for those just trying to enjoy the game normally. The raid was so successful that the game had to be taken offline. Words became blacklisted in the chat from then on, and most importantly, avatars that are black, wear an afro, and where suits were automatically banned. Pulls closed as a meme eventually leapt off 4chan and started to materialize in the real world. A real-life raid was organized in Finland in front of the Sioux Lake headquarters, which happens to be the parent company of Habbo Hotel. They donned black wigs and suits while forming swastikas, clearly mimicking the raids conducted in the game. Pulls closed popularity as a meme reached a peak when Texas resident Mary Alice Alterfer came across a pool's closed sign pinned on the gate of a public pool and reported it to her local news television station. Mary, and subsequently the local news station, misinterpreted the sign as racial discrimination. Those who knew the true context of the meme were amused by this and took it upon themselves to troll, more like harass, Mary for interpreting the meme for the lols. This event in the meme's life reminded people of its original purpose. 4chan wanted to protest the racial discrimination Habbo Hotel were perpetuating in their classic for the lols type way. Mary's misreading of the meme is the exact opposite purpose of the original meme. So, Manon, rule 47 is the pool is always closed because some people just love to ruin things for others. The moderators for Habbo Hotel were being racist jerks and classic 4chan responded in the most provocative way possible. The rules of the internet aren't to be taken seriously at all, but if there is one thing to take seriously, it would be this one. Don't be a jerk who ruins everything for everyone. Thank you, Blue Shades! Don't forget to check him out! His channel is in the description! Bye, Manon. Bye, Cybermare. Phew! We learned a lot of things today! The only thing I learned is that Fortune ruined the joke of Rule 34 with all their shitty rules. Yeah! Are you suggesting we need new rules of the internet? Uh, not really, but what I'm saying- Epic! Let's make our own rules of the internet! Hmm, there shouldn't even be rules about the internet. Done! Check them out! Hmm, let's see. We're all friends on the internet. The internet is perfect. Piracy is always morally correct. You must watch Neon Cat before using the internet. Total upgrade, right? This is like, a side grade from fucking awful to fucking stupid. 
except that piracy rule, that one's good. It's probably for the best if people only remembers rule 34 in the future, and don't forget rule 35. You better deliver. Cyber